hi guys. Yeah, you get it into a job that you're just dreading because you know it's going to be an awful pain in the butt. Upper AR on this went bad. Eh, it's kind of floppy. I just took this thing apart in about eight minutes. Everything came apart easy. And I'm scared now. Nothing ever comes apart easy. And I mean nothing. But, it's nice for a change. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not what I was expecting. At all. I was figuring this was going to be, you know, then we're going to be a fight. No problem getting them on or off. Broke them loose, and it was almost turning with your fingers. Like I said, it's kind of scary. But, uh, no good, real good place to put you to watch this, so. Let me just get this done and I'll come back. So hang on. Well, guys, I'm home now. Uh, <laughs> this scared me. Uh, this came apart and went back together way faster than I would have ever anticipated it. Uh, this was under an hour to change. Don't ask me how, I ain't figured it out. And I figure something's got to go horribly wrong at this point. Because uh, like I say, that dude came apart way too easy. I did notice one side. If you kind of look at that hole, a little oblong to this side here. And... That one's not so much, but this other one is a little oblong this way. But it's on the truck. Uh, the tire is sitting really good now, out <laughs> instead of in, because it was. Wearing the inside of that tire off pretty good. But it's fixed now. And I'm really happy. Uh, I was figuring two or three hours to get this thing tore apart and then put it back together. And it was probably going to turn into an all day job. But it took less than an hour. And that really blows my mind. Uh, things don't usually go quite that smoothly. <laughs> but I'm not going to argue one bit about it. But at any rate, guys, uh, I'm calling it a day. I've got some other things up here at the farm done. So I'm calling it a day. And a successful one at that. So we'll see you next time, and as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Sometimes you just get lucky. Today's that day. Now I fear what's going to happen next. <laughs> we'll see you next time, guys. Well, hi, guys. Uh, had to work on the truck today. And it was going to be a job that I thought was going to be an all-day event. Well, it turned out to be a very quick and easy job, which still scares me. But today I've got to do, got done early, and I got to do a little bit to this tractor. A few things. One... 
I took the battery box off that was under the step there because I need to get back whoops to that filter. Can you see it in that back there? That round thing there? That's the transmission filter. I need to get that battery box off so I can get to that easier. And also to get into the brakes because this right brake, left brake, does not work. So I'm going to be getting into that. I did get that hydraulic filter changed. Uh, added mm, gallon of hydraulic oil to it. New filter in it. Uh, it came around back. I uh, did a little scraping around. Cleaning up a bit. But I got the center link here to work. Where you can take the ball out. It was very, 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 very cruddy. Sticky still. So that'll get some more work done to it. More oil put down in here. But this is an original Oliver Centerlink made for this tractor. And to have it still on this tractor is a rarity. Just like whoops, those. How many of you guys have seen those Oliver screw-on hydraulic ends lately? These are the ones made for an Oliver that had a coupler that came up and you twisted them on. Also has the uh, that Teleflow electro controlled hydraulic that's the plug for it right there. And it's all still hooked up. Um, I've got to make some plans to get some steel to fix where it's broken here. Let's see if I can get it down in there. Uh, yeah. It's broken away. And I looked at this specifically when I load before we loaded it up because we tied chains on to this down here and when we got home that's what I found so that bracket's got to come off and get fixed and it'll get fixed right uh, I've got oil I've got filters uh, got a valve cover gasket for it, air cleaner, a lot of stuff I have for this tractor. Uh, I just wish I could get it inside right now, but I'm going to have to do a lot of shifting around in the barn to do that. So for now, she's going to have to sit out here, like it or not. But, like I said, it's a pretty straight original tractor, and that's really hard to come by. Um, you don't necessarily find many like this. You know, they're just, it's not beat up. There's nothing banged up. It just needs cleaned up. And that's what it's going to get. 
all the fluid filters and fluids are going to get changed um, I get find a rear end plug and check the wall on it if it's bad it'll get drained too um, the first things first get all get it cleaned up pressure washed uh, and start re changing you know uh, well one being the fan belts bad alternators a little iffy so it's going to get changed I have one sitting here that's off my 1550 diesel I changed it it wasn't bad it was good the reason I changed it is we had a white air planter and the alternator wasn't enough to keep up with the tractor and the planter so I put a 65 or 85 amp alternator on that tractor so the one that was on it will go on here that's simple enough to do but I need to get it cleaned up everything well she needs a bath I mean she just needs a bath and the right oil filter <laughs> uh, I don't like it when people do that but hey I'm not going to complain I'll fix it but Barnett Sales Company. I have to look at this closer. I'm interested to see what it says. Because it's, you don't find them where you can see that very well very often. And that's an original Oliver dealership from the 60s. So that, I have to look at this. But guys, I'm going to call it right here. Uh, it's starting to get cold time to call it a day so we'll see you next time and the work will continue on this tractor uh hope maybe i can get some things moved around in the barn to get her inside uh, that's the ultimate plan but we'll see you next time and as always please comment rate and subscribe she may not look like much right now boys but when I get done with her, she's going to stand tall. I mean, heck, it ain't every day you see an 1850 diesel narrow front. <laughs> we'll see you next time, guys. Well, hi, guys. It's the 5th of December. And it looks like there's something missing here. Gee. Yeah, I took the drawbar off. And I took that cradle it bolts there and here off. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're on the back of the truck. What's funny is this line down through it. And here, and the same thing here. And you can kind of see it into this. And pieces, I hope you can see that. This one's. goes there and this is going to have to be heated and bent back down in order for it to fit right this one on the other hand this is going to be the bugger because it's bent you set that there so probably what's going to happen have to happen this will get welded 
along here on both sides first. Then it's going to have to be heated and right in here bent back down to where it can be welded back to here and here. Not going to be a fun one, I can tell you that. Um, this was my surprise. Uh, I looked this thing over and I did not see any problems here till after we chained it down and got it home and I discovered they were broke. I uh, cleaned these up with a wire wheel and they were had a lot of rust on them. See it's cracked right there. Maybe. And you can see how out of shape it is. So my thoughts are, you can see it marked through there. Kind of odd. Bad steel? Who knows? My thoughts are make a plate to go on the outside that's, say, like that. You know, that much bigger to stick past, say a quarter inch past this, and then lay a good bead beside this, on top of this, to this, on both sides. And just maybe, it might hold together. Now I've seen stuff break before, but when you see lines like that, it's usually an impurity in the steel. Uh, you can see a nice line right there, maybe. But, uh, I'm going to stop by my cousins tonight and see if he can uh, drill me a couple of pieces of steel to weld onto this, to beef this up. Well, actually, here, you know. So, that's what I've been up to today. <laughs> Getting that thing off is a real trick. And I'm going to have to learn the trick on how to get that PTO lever off right there. Because that bolt is right against that lever. Actually, it's this one. And that looks like it's going to be a mutter humper to get back in. The rest of them will be easy. This one looks like it's going to be the problem. Mm, may not be able to do what I'm thinking after all. Huh. Hmm, hmm. Well, I'm going to have to do some more investigation on this. Because there may not be enough room between it and this bracket for the three point, your rock shaft. So. Uh-huh. May have to consult my Uncle Bill. Like maybe welding on the back side of that some passes on it to give it some more beef on the back might work. I don't know 100%. I can put it on and I can always grind it off. But it does need to be beefed up down there. That's why you're never supposed to pull from anything, especially an Oliver, 
other than the drawbar. You wrap a chain around that to pull something, and this is what you get. Them brackets broke. They're not made for that. Hey, right, guys, I'm calling it a day. Time to go visit my cousin, get his thoughts. And we're going to call it here. So we'll see you next time. And as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. At least I got the pieces. <laughs> and all their screwed up glory. Mm. We'll see you next time, guys.